Sidney had never done television before, but he was a good old friend. His wife was, a, was very active in the theater. The, the first little show, the second little show, the third, she was a producer of, of, of Broadway musicals. And Sidney wrote incredibly uh, successful movies. And I said, Sidney, but he was a great historian, and he was a, um, an amateur painter. And I said, you know, the Louvre is really right up your alley. He, he loved the Louvre. He had seen it many times. But we gave him research. I had an incredible woman doing the research, jo Joanne Goldberg. I mean, one of the great associate producers of all time because she was a great researcher. And she really enjoyed to do research. I mean, she would find out or what was happening in the United States while the, the, somebody important was sleeping in the, in, the, in the doorway of the Louvre. Meanwhile, back in the US, this is what was happening. I mean, we really had an incredible, and that's what makes a film. That's what makes a film is the, not only the good research, but the anecdotal material. That when you're looking at something and you hear the story about what happened there, and meanwhile something else is happening somewhere, and you can relate it, it's really what makes it come alive. And so we had this research for Sydney, and he said, okay, I'll do it. I'm gonna write this as though it's a once upon a time. He said, because that's what people like. They want to know that once upon a time there is this, and then this, there was this terrible event that happened, and then this had made the event better, and finally they lived ha happily ever after, and that's how I'm going to write this thing. And we have to get somebody to do this, to narrate it, who you really will, ha will have the passion about, not only the, the building and what happened here, but the people who lived in it all the kings and queens and the, and the courtiers and the romances and the, and the uh, villainry and the intrigue and so on. And he said, I'm going to write all of it into this script. I'm not going to write a, a film about brush strokes. With. I couldn't care less about that. And I said, that's why I want you to do this. That's what I want. I want people to understand what is France. And France was its history and its culture and its well-being. He said, we have to have a model of how this thing grew, because he said, when I read your research, I mean, it grew and then it was brought, burned down, and one part of it burned down and then rebuilt, and then they added on, and every king had something to do. And I said, well, you know, models are very expensive. Well, comes Mr. Darman, my Dushabeau hero, and he says, my son makes models. So I have pictures of them we made a model, pieces of the Louvre, and as we tell the story, a hand dressed in, a, in, in the period of the time, uh, depending on when it happened, a hand comes in and takes one piece out and puts another piece in, and that's how you look at this model, and you then see the Louvre itself, and you see how it grew. And it was a brilliant idea to make, architecturally, to make this thing come along. I mean, we have had architects ask us to, for copies of the film just for that purpose alone, to show how one side burned down, and then you see how it, it fell apart, and that was all cleaned away, and then it would open up the vista to the whole of the city, up Champs-Élysées to the Arc de Triomphe in the end, and they never filled in that piece again. So that piece was never replaced, but then they replaced it. I, what happened there, they replaced it something else, somewhere else. Now, of course, you have the uh, I am Peg in the center. I don't have that in my model. But it was an opportunity to tell the story. And there was a, uh, an NBC correspondent, Bernie Frizzell, in Paris at the time. And I found him to be a very unsympathetic character. I mean, first place, he was very anti-female. And second plan made remarks about it all the time. And second place, he just wasn't co op I mean, he wasn't, I just didn't see this man as the man who tells the story of the Louvre and make it come alive and gently. So I talked it over with Sydney, and Sydney said, Listen, I was just in Paris, and guess who's starring in, uh, in London? And guess who's starring in the theater in London in a play called Man and Boy? Charles Boyer and he would be perfect. I said, oh, what? it's a brilliant idea, because to the French, he's an American, and to the Americans, he's the typical Frenchman. He's the perfect person to bring this together. 
So I flew up to London and I had a conversation with him and I told him what I wanted him to do and he was ecstatic. He just, he said, you must write a script. Tell Mr. Carroll, he must write a script that I am making love to a beautiful woman and her name is Le Louvre. And so that's the way he presented this. The script that was written the Once Upon a Time by Sidney Carroll was written like a love story from Charles Boyer. And the result of that <coughs> film, it was extraordinary, really. I think it's the best thing I've ever done. And it played over and over. And in this case, we got so many letters from so many people. Schools all over the world had sessions in which they showed the film and then had a, a research history research as a result of that. Lyndon Johnson wrote me a letter long after this and said, most Americans never go more than 100 miles from their home, and you brought the world into the homes of these people as though they were there. He said, that's an incredible thing to do. It really was. We got unbelievable letters. From then on, I could do anything I wanted at NBC, um. <laughs> even though I was a woman producer. <laughs>